In this video, I'm going to talk about how I see the differences between Celtic knotwork and Zentangle and how knotwork can be meditative. In the second half of this video, I'll be inking over the pencil lines and then you can see for yourself why I find it so meditative. Enjoy. Uh, working out the knots in this uh, larger piece and um, I wanted to talk a little bit about why I find not work to be meditative. Now, um, a lot of, some of you may know me through Zentangle and the Zentangle background where we talk about no mistakes and we use no erasers and it, it really is a very wonderful structured method of learning to draw uh, step by step, line by line. Um, and I have to say that Zentangle's taught me an awful, awful lot about uh, observation and um, how I perceive patterns, and um, as well as given me confidence to draw in a very different way and create art in a very different way than I used to. I used to be much more of a texture-based person where I, did, I worked primarily with fibers and jewelry, and, uh, and I hardly work with them nowadays, it seems, um, because I really love this. It's um, a lot more portable than a spinning wheel. Uh, and uh, I, but I want to talk about the differences about doing knot work and doing something like you know, Zentangle or some of you call it Zen doodling or uh, whatever. Um, you know, I was trained uh, by Rick and Maria from the Zentangle folks, um, and I am a certified Zentangle teacher. But, um, and I did that, I shouldn't say but, I did that training, um, my gosh, back in 2011 now, so that's seven years ago. And I, um, and it's, it's really helped me grow. Um, and I have grown into working in other mediums. Um, and what I've noticed is that, um, First of all, Celtic knotwork was something I had always strived to kind of understand or get for a very, very long time. And I had looked at a number of books and um, just would get stymied. Uh, and there was just something, there was this perceptual leap that I wasn't making. And I came back from Iona in 2016, just really jazzed to kind of look at it again. And it occurred to me, you know, that as a teacher, I wanted to apply um, what it is I do when I'm in a classroom, which is I try to give people lots of different ways to approach learning. So some people are visual learners. Some people prefer to read. Some people need to do it hands-on. Some people need to watch first and watch and watch and watch again. Uh, some people need the grids and the very geometric basis, almost like I would call it the grammar, um, if you're a language person. Uh, but, and, and, and so I thought, I'm going to go through this process, and I'm going to do not work all of the ways. <laughs> and it really helped me understand, you know, where, you know, you know I am a, a visual learner. I don't do well with grids. Um, I did learn a lot from grids, but not uh, there were there were certain ways that they had been presented that weren't working for me, and um, and all of that is a long way to say that this is a very um, the actual working out of the knots and the working out of even the design before you get to this point is a very um, left-brained modality. Um, so one would think, oh, well, that's not meditative at all. Uh -huh. But one thing I've learned from doing the labyrinth work that I do is that having a balance of the left and the right brain is, is a wonderful thing. And um, especially something that may seem complex when you can break it down into individual steps and get past that, you know, oh, you know, if I use an eraser, Am I creating mistake? Well, when I use an eraser to work with not work, I am, I kind of think of it like carving almost. I'm just kind of, I'm, I'm tweaking and I'm making the lines a little bit cleaner. You know, it, to me, it feels like carving with, um, with graphite or carving away what I have laid down. 
So to me, it's not a matter of making mistakes. So I invite you to let go of that idea. Um, if you are a person um, who has done Zentangle or you're a person who automatically thinks that the eraser is bad. Um, when I teach Celtic Knotwork, I am not teaching. I, I teach it from an informed background of um, of Zentangle, but I don't teach it as Zentangle. I don't teach it as um, that there's this one way to do it. I teach, I teach it that it, it's okay to use the eraser. Um, and I not quite explaining this as, as well as I, I wanted to, but I feel that when I'm just, once I get into the flow, I really believe that even with a left brain modality such as this, that when you practice something and you practice it in small bits, and then all of a sudden those pieces can start falling together. So when I actually started doing the knot work, for me, that actually, I've done it for a while. So it did become meditative. And so I certainly wouldn't encourage anybody who's just starting out to try to attempt a project like this, unless you want to make yourself crazy. However, you can do this. This is totally achievable, and it's done block by block, block or step by step. And um, I'm hope I'm planning on creating another class where I will string together some of the things I've put in my fir- my first three Skillshare classes into how you would actually approach creating and getting to the point where you would be comfortable with something like this. But now I want to show you the really, uh, for me, what is, is this is the cream. This is, once I get to this stage, and, and, once, and, and again, it was meditative for me to get here, but now when I, once I've gotten to this stage where it's penciled in and I'm ready to ink this, to me that is the really relaxing part of this process. Um, so, um, cause my brain was definitely working last night, um, a whole lot more when I was, um, finishing this piece up and it, I want to say it probably took me about, oh, about three and a half hours to get to this. So the part that's really meditative for me is the inking, uh, be prepared to get your hands all filled with graphite while you're working. Uh, you may want to keep your pencil ready as well. Because um, as I start moving, I might start blurring some of the lines. I may have to fill in lines and erase a little bit more as I go. Um, in the first video of my Skillshare class, I had talked about being mindful about which way when you draw a curve is comfortable for your hand. And you're going to see me turning this a lot to make sure that the lines I get are comfortable for me to draw. Because I've got so much going on in this piece, I'm not going to be doing huge swipes of curves, and that will make it easier for me. Anyway, um, but I'm going to just pick a spot, pick any spot, and you're going to just do one line at a time. And this is the time where if you feel like you need to make, um, if I wanted to make this band thicker or thinner at this point, I could. This looks just about right, and I'm going to bring it to about here, and I'm going to turn it a little bit more, and I'll do another part of a band. Always being mindful about where these are going to meet up on the other side. But this is the really just quieting part of the process for me when I can get to do this part of just just doing the inking. Not that the puzzle part of figuring out the knots is isn't quieting. It is also for me, but it does again take a little bit more brain work. But this is the payoff. And when you get comfortable with doing knot work, even the working out and sorting out of the design and the knots will become quieting and meditative for you. It's just during the learning stage, it may not always feel that way. And so I invite you while you're learning to be gentle with yourself.
You don't have to get it perfect. It's about learning. And I actually invite you to take a look sometime at some of the plates from the Book of Kells or the Lindisfarne Gospels because you will see if you follow one of the threads of knot work, you will see occasional mistakes or goofs. And there are some that say that's just a little bit of, you know, letting God in. You know, we're not all, we're not built to be perfect. You can interpret it how you like. But just a reminder to go easy on yourself. One line at a time. And I'm actually inking over my pencil marks. Now, if you want to do something like this and you want to work with lighter colors or you want to work with um, other colors and the pencil is showing through for you even after erasing, what you may want to do is do what I'm doing, which is create a master first. So this is going to be my master. And then I'll put this on a light box. And I will tra tape over a fresh piece of paper. And at that point, I could choose to do this in a different color. I could choose to do it in a different medium. And I wouldn't have the pencil lines to worry about at all. So yes, it's more work, but it, for me it's just more meditative drawing these wonderful lines. And watching this kind of come to life is really delightful. Another thing you'll see as I'm going that, you know, I, this is, I'm taking an opportunity to maybe make certain bands thicker or thinner. So I won't always mention when I'm doing that, but you might see me do that. And again, I'm just adjusting the placement of the pad here as I go so that I can make a line that's most comfortable for me. And how can you tell if your line is not comfortable? If you start drawing towards yourself and you just kind of suddenly feel like your hand's getting a little shaky, that's one indicator. Um, probably going to also hear animal sounds in the background here are my dog and cats are getting a little rambunctious right now So you might say, you know, you might have a question. You might say, well, what happens if this is your master and you really mess up a line? So like this line wasn't particularly, wasn't very perfect there. It was a little, I had a little um, skip. Um, and again, I'm going to be using this with a light box, so I'm not going to worry too much. If this were my original and only piece, what I would probably do is just go over that a little bit. Um, to fix it. But in a piece like this, it's really not going to be that noticeable either. So here's a piece where I'm probably going to want to thicken this band up a little bit. Just change the way that that, the way that line goes. And even that up. So while you're doing this, again, when you're creating a line, you want to make sure that you try to bring it so that it meets with its counterpart on the other side so it looks like it's actually flowing underneath. Um, or a reasonable fact simile.
So here's a part. When I interlaced this, I didn't have this line meet up with this exactly. So I'm going to jump over onto here so I can kind of pick up that line and make it flow into this piece. And the same thing for here. Yeah. This is a great thing to do and put on some music that you enjoy or if you're in a nice quiet spot, just enjoy the sound of the outdoors or your animals. So at this point I'm going to jump ahead and um, finish the piece and uh, you can um, see the finished piece or at least the finished Thanks for watching. If you'd like to see more, check out the links in the show notes below. You can also find me on Facebook and Instagram. Cheers!